Welcome back to Candy's Classic Game Shrine, everyone. Today is going to be a pretty involved Tinker Time DIY and a pretty niche one at that. Um, but before we go any further, I want to apologize for the terrible echo in this video. Um, unfortunately, my dining room is the best place to do this, and it's the only place in my house that doesn't have carpeting. So this is a Sharp NES TV. It's an officially licensed product from Nintendo in combination with Sharp. Back in the late 80s, very early 90s, there were only a few thousand of them made, we believe, and we're not really sure how many have survived over time, but this is something that has been in my family since it was new, and it has taken a beating over the years due to my uncle using it and not being so gentle with it. So over time, I have amassed replacement parts. Some are 3D printed, such as the doors that you can see there. Um, but the rest, like that bezel there, the Sharp logo, those are original. The start and power, or the power and reset button are original. And I would like to replace them since they're missing on my television. Along with that, I also want to install the blinking light win. So now, what do we do? First things first, make sure you have all the tools necessary for what you're doing. In theory, all I will need is a Phillips head screwdriver and a lot of patience and the towel that you see on top of the TV right now. That's going to help cushion it once I turn it upside down, once I have removed the back of it. It's a pretty involved process, but I'm going to take you through step-by-step step as best as I can. I did this seven years ago when I kind of first started my channel, so I'm hoping I've learned a little bit and can make it a little bit better than that video. So let's continue. Okay, before beginning, I highly recommend downloading the PDF that is the service manual for this television. It can be found online. Um, the place where I got it originally was Nintendo Age, However, there is a Facebook group for owners of this television. I'll put it in the description below so you can go join and download the file. So with that said, you're gonna want to remove the six screws on the back of the television. You have one in here, one on the other side over here. You've got me dropping a screwdriver. You've also got one hidden over here as well as one hidden down here. And then the remaining two, one is hidden here, and then the other one is under the bump of the television here. So I'm going to remove those and set those aside. All right, you may not be able to see very well, but I have removed the screws from the TV, and now it's time to remove the back plate from the TV. Before you do so, keep in mind that you will have to feed this wire through the plate because where it's attached does not come out. Be careful, you don't want to damage the tube inside. This is the interior of the TV, which we will be working in quite heavily. Okay, took things off the tripod for a minute so I can move around and show you things. The next step that we're going to want to do is disconnect these wires from the game portion of the TV from the motherboard of the TV. So the best way to do that is to just follow the leads for the corresponding wires find their spots on the board, they're very well labeled, and remove them. I'll show you as best as I can with the video where these are so it might be easier to navigate the board as you're trying to find these wires. I apologize for any shakiness though. So the wires that you're going to be looking for are wires, let me grab my pointer here, that way I don't have to go near it. So you're going to want EB, which is this one right here. You're also going to want a, which is this one right here. You're also going to want EA, not the gaming company, right there on the back of this piece here. 
then you're also going to want V, which is a little difficult to show with the camera. So give me a moment. V is hiding out here like a little pain in the butt. Now I need to find out where it went. So my camera refuses to focus, I apologize. So you can see right there the V on the motherboard there. Sorry, it's focusing on the stick. If we move, hopefully you'll see it better. That little one right here next to the capacitor is V. And you're also going to need N, which is hiding all the way in the back behind that little metal rectangle, for lack of a better phrase. So, friendly tip from Candace, if you're trying to get better access to remove the wire labeled N, which is in the back there, your best bet is to remove the wire labeled B so that you can slide the motherboard out from the tray that it's in. It gives you a lot better access and makes your life a lot easier but just make sure to plug that back in when you're done. Okay, so here comes the first thing that I want to repair with my television. Now that we have access and have disconnected all of the wires for the game portion under the television, you now, as you can see, have those six screws on the inside of the television. They're responsible for holding this plate in place. Mine is broken from years of abuse in my uncle's hands, so I am going to be replacing it with this donor piece that I received. So once those screws are out, it's a matter of popping the existing one out and placing this one in and replacing the screws. Hello everyone, we are back and I have unfastened the six screws that were inside. So we are just going to remove the old bezel and some plastic that was stuck inside of it for 30 years or so and uh, put that to the side. Now we just get our new one and we fit that into place like a glove, as uh, I think it's Ace Ventura says. Now we're just going to go on the back and screw it in. And this piece of the restoration, at least, is finished. So I finished installing the new bezel for the front of the TV. And I've also unplugged all of the necessary wires so that we can detach the gain portion from the television. And before we turn the TV upside down, I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like now with its new... Uh, bezel and cover and everything. I'm really happy with how that looks, but let's keep going. Now that our TV is upside down, we're going to focus on the top portion. Well, technically it's the bottom, but now it's on top and remove the four screws that are holding the game unit to the TV. I'll bring the camera up top so you can see. Just give me a second. Alrighty, so the screws that you're going to be removing are the ones that are in here, in here, in here, and in here. And once that's done, you should be able to just lift this off from the TV base. And when you do lift it off, be mindful of the wires that we just disconnected there. Okay, let's lift this off. Let's make sure I have all of these out and not stuck on anything. And there it is. Now we're going to be opening this up to now remove the original pin connector and replacing it with a blinking light win, as well as adding the buttons that have been broken off that I have since gotten replacements for. 
Now that we've got the game unit separated from the TV, we're going to be removing the screws on the game unit, which you'll find two here. You will find two here, two here, one in here, and oh my gosh, where is it? There we go, and one down here. So again, still Phillips screwdriver is all that's needed. Once you remove the screws, you can then take this plastic cover off and then you have access to the RF shield and the pin connector and the disc, uh, not disc tray, cartridge tray. So let's go and do that. All right, as you can see, we have now removed the top of the game unit from the bottom. And since we have this off, I'm going to move on to the next piece of restoration, which if you can't tell, right here used to be two buttons for power and reset and they are no longer there however i've sourced myself some replacements which are just a matter of these two screws and it's as good as new so let's go replace those All right, let's take a peek now that it's all put together. Oh man, she hasn't looked like that. Helps if I show it to you, but she hasn't looked like that since the 80s. I have to fix the plastic here, but that's a small thing. I'm really happy with how this is coming out. Let's get started on the next piece. We're gonna be removing the screws around the RF shield. I think there's 11. And we're going to be replacing the pin connector. Let me just double check. We've got one, two screws here. Then we've got three screws there. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five screws there on the side. You can see a little bit better now. So let's go ahead and remove these and remove the RF shield. Okay, so as you can see, the RF shield is off and I now have my blinking light win. I had to take this out of my other NES because I feel like it's better suited in the TV since I have a top loader that reads them just fine. So I figured it's a better use. And without further ado, let's remove the screws that are necessary to take this out. You're going to want to remove the screws here and here. And then on the other side, there are three. One, two, three. And then you'll have access to the pin connector, which will be removed. Once you've unscrewed everything, just carefully take it out. There you go. There's your tray. Now for this piece, you just want to lift it up carefully. Push this bad boy on out. That will not be thrown out. That will definitely be used. So now we take our blinking light wind board. Make sure you pay attention. It says this side up. You find the pins over here. Sorry about the abrupt cut, my cat demanded food, but for this piece, you just line it up over the grooves on top and just slide it on. Once it's there, use the existing screw holes to fasten this in place. We are now assembled. We are going to take this and put it back, forgive me, on top of the TV there. So. That is also fastened by four screws, so keep that in mind. Remember friends, we are now going to be screwing in the screw here, here, where is it? Here, and here, to secure the game unit to the TV before we flip that back over. 
Well, we are all wired back up and ready to put the back cover on. So, in order to do that, I recommend you take the power cord for the TV. And feed it through the hole on the shell of the back of the TV that you'll see in a moment. take that gently in case something was stuck and now all that's left to do is replace the I think it's six screws one two three four five and six so yes six screws on the back of the TV and it's ready to go So I'm sure a bunch of you are wondering how I got the TV to look so new and shiny again. And I used a couple different techniques. The main technique that I used was to coat it with some baby oil. This is the exact same one that I used. Uh, and I put it on a paper towel and a cotton cloth and I basically just wax on, waxed off with it for several minutes until it was buffed and polished. It took me pretty much an entire day to do the entire TV. And in order to get the residue from the adhesive that was stuck on the front, I took a cotton ball and soaked it in white vinegar and basically held it against the residue for a few minutes and let it soften up. And then I took an X-Acto knife and very carefully and very gently scraped it off and then once that was done, I went ahead and polished that piece as well. Now, in order to decide what I was going to use to polish my stuff, it was between several different products. I was thinking about the Meguiar's Back to Black product that is often used on cars, but I wasn't sure how it was going to react with the plastic on the television. So I looked at some other ideas such as WD-40, which is good to get some residue off but wasn't strong enough to get the other residue off that I was mentioning before that's in the front. So what I went with was testing out olive oil and baby oil to see which one did the best, uh, if one outcompeted the other, but in the end, it seemed that they performed pretty much identical and I went with the baby oil, as you all knew. Um, word of advice, if you're using any of the cleaners, or polishing compounds, be careful to not get it on any of the written lettering that is on the TV, such as the on, off, the reset, the power, because the oil will immediately take it off. So use extreme caution. I used Q-tips and cotton balls and a lot of patience. So keep that in mind. In order for me to decide what compound was best to use before I used it on the actual TV itself. I took this old piece of plastic here and I tested the different liquids and compounds that I was thinking about using to see how it reacted with the plastic. That way I could minimize any potential damage. So as you can see a little bit here, it might be hard to pick up on the camera, but you can see some cloudiness here. That's where I experimented with some acetone to see if I can blend any scratches out, but I did not like the look that that gave, so I just immediately gave up on that. But when you turn it around here, you can see here where the residue from the old label was, 
It's nice and shiny. This is from the WD-40, which wasn't too bad. But when you flip it around this way, let's see if I can get it well enough on camera. But basically over here and here is where I tested out the olive oil and the baby oil. So I could see what the effects were. And then I let it sit for 24 hours so I could make sure there wasn't any like, you know, residual effects. But that has been my polishing uh, technique and I hope you all can find it useful, not just for your potential TV, but anything else. And a little side note, but luckily my plastic lens over there where it says power and where the power button is on the television isn't scratched, but if yours happens to be, you can get a product called Polywatch, which is a plastic polish, which removes scratches really, really well. I've done it in the past and used it on plenty of other projects. I just want to take a moment to show you guys this little piece of plastic in between the on and off and reset buttons. This was broken off on my television, so I had to fabricate a new piece using existing plastic from the television so that it matched in color. So what I did was take the broken piece that used to have buttons on it and basically cut off bits of plastic and plastic welded them together to kind of fit in between here. It's not that great when you look up close, but at a distance it does the job and I'll probably do some fine tuning as I go and tackle the filament lines on the doors. I'll just get that all out of the way at the same time. But for now, when you look at it, it's pretty good. For anyone wondering what product I used to quote unquote weld the plastic together, um, it's a product called Plastruct Plastic Weld. And I found it on Amazon and it's kind of like acetone in that it melts the plastic, but it doesn't leave a cloudy white residue that pure acetone usually does to different plastics like ABS, PLA, etc. And now that our work is finished, let's enjoy the fruits of our labor and play some games. Love this damn game. Now let's play some duck hunt.
Thanks for coming with me on this journey to restore my childhood sharp NES TV. I hope you all were entertained, maybe educated, and had a good time while you were here. If you have any questions regarding the build or restoration process, feel free to leave me a comment below. And with that said, everyone, take care.